Hey everybody, our new 2025 Polaris Razor Pro R4 Ultimate has been under the knife, getting a ton of upgrades, getting it ready for all types of riding. We've got a detailed walk around video. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, it's Nick Olson. Welcome back to the channel. And we take this Razor all over the place. We've owned it for a little over a month and we've already taken to Santa Hollow and done some rock crawling. It's been to Glamis a couple of times doing some duning and now we're taking it on a several hundred mile Arizona Peace Trail ride in Arizona, which is kind of similar to Baja style riding. So if you guys are new to the channel, that's what we're about, all different types of riding. And let's start off talking about the parts breakdown. We need to have this car perform at its best in all environments, starting off with wheels and tires. So what you're gonna notice right now is we have our rock tire setup. Now we go to Utah several times a year. We like to do some rock crawling. When I first picked up this Pro R, we took it right to San Hollow for the UTV takeover, and we did some crawling on some trails that I have yet to completely finish and conquer. Milt's Mile, which is a seven rated trail, and then the Maze, which is an eight rated trail. So I was stoked to get those trails under my belt. And every time I go to Utah, we're gonna be running some 35 inch sticky tires. So these are the same sticky tires we've been running on our previous vehicles. These are Obor Rock Scraper 35 inch, and we chose to run these on our stock Polaris beadlock wheels. So for 2025, it is a real beadlock wheel, the nicest wheel that's ever come stock on a Polaris. And if you guys have seen some of the content, you guys have been around rock crawling, you know that, you know, scratches happen, wheels and tires get beat up. So we thought, why not utilize those stock wheels and use the Obor rock scrapers? We're running about eight to nine PSI. Here's a couple clips of me crawling. One of the days was wet and slippery and that PSI tended to work really well um, in slippery and in dry conditions. So that's kind of basically what we run um, when we're in Utah. And I do not want to go to Utah without the sticky tires. They're awesome. They even work really well. And when you're ripping through the sand and all that, it's not all rock crawling, as you guys know. It, there's all different types of riding, but the Obors are the only tires I'm going to be running every time I go to Utah. So that's why these are on the car. That's why I want to start off with them. All right, so rock tire setup. Let's talk about sand dune setup. After we left UTV Takeover, we went straight to Glamis for Camp Razor as well as Veterans Day. Love to do it. We're going to be out there a bunch this season. And of course, you need some high performance paddle tires. So we stuck with a similar setup we had on our previous vehicle, which are some Sand Tires Unlimited 32 inch Big Tebow fronts matched with Blackbird 32s. Both of the tires are comp cut. The rear is a number two. Comp cutting it removes a lot of the weight. This is one of the most high performing paddle tire sets you can get. Paired with some price designs wheels, which are custom powder coated, of course. Chupacabra teal with the oil slick hardware. The setup is, is really cool. Really one of the nice upgrades I've ever had on a side-by-side -side in general. So really enjoy how these tires perform on the Pro R after driving the car really hard two weekends in a row. Uh, I've experimented between 12 and 13 PSI. Uh, the paddle tires being comp cut are some of the lightest on the market. So I said they're 32 inches tall, the front's weighing at only 16 pounds, the rear weighing at 24 pounds. When you pair that with an 18 pound front wheel and a 20 pound rear wheel, you're talking a very lightweight, high performing setup. Sand Tires Unlimited is one of the only brands that starts with a true four ply tire. So there is more material that can be removed when you are lightening them up. And also I love the characteristics. They're very predictable in terms of doing the rear end feels more composed around bowls and some of the other tire shapes that tend to slide around a little bit more. Everyone has their own performance when they're duning. I do it in four-wheel drive all the time. I like duning hard and that is my preferred setup. So, so moving on to our third wheel and tire set. Again, so we're optimized for every environment we ride in. Desert, we're running some 35s. We're sticking with Method and Tensor. I splurged on the Method 413 fully forged B-Lock wheels. Uh, they're so pretty with this polished silver. I just had to leave them. I didn't want to powder coat them. It kind of throws off the coloring I was going for, but it is what it is. I'll talk about that more in a second. The wheels are gorgeous. They're lightweight. They're forged. They're of the highest quality of anything in the industry. And we're pairing them up with some 35 inch tensor regulator twos. We were one of the first people to have these tires when they launched last year, took them down to Baja. Really like these tires. They're lightweight. You notice a theme here, high performance, lightweight, you're picking up horsepower, you're increasing your braking performance. I think weight is always a consideration when you're talking wheel and tire packages. And that's what we chose to go with. So 
I couldn't be more stoked on how they look. I'm excited to put some real miles on this weekend. And as it relates to that, we'll get into suspension and ride height and what we decided to go with there. All right, I mentioned ride height. Let's just talk about suspension since I brought it up. You guys might know if you follow the channel, I'm a suspension geek. Of course, we had to team up with MTS Off-Road. We've been using them on our last of our several of our car builds. Ned and the team over there really know what I like. So what they did is took the stock that live valve suspension did their new valving uh, internal updates as well as a new spring kit. For the fronts, they also used their billet lower shock forks with the beefier shock shafts. And so far, I'm really digging the setup. Uh, this is a similar setup we had on our Teal Pro R and the setup works really well. Uh, one thing that's interesting is that Ned and the team are working on some new internal bypass tubes, which are gonna be an upgrade. They're gonna allow more ramp up, which is something that I really like, and ramp up, if you're not familiar, is really allows the shock to be supple and compliant on the smaller impacts, low speed, but then get more progressive so it doesn't bottom out a lot. So one of the things I really noticed when driving the Pro R hard in the dunes is that red button on the steering wheel with the live valve suspension is such a game changer. It allows you to push harder through those big G outs. It's very difficult to have a suspension work amazingly well in all environments. I talked about a lot of the suspension on my previous vehicle and the speed that works incredible on the hard pack, but unfortunately that car is so heavy when it got to the sand, it would blow through the stroke and bottom out. So I think the live valve is the best way to have something that works where you can drive very hard in all environments. The MTS suspension is great. And what I'm excited about is we're gonna now drive this thing four or 500 miles in the Arizona desert. I will have driven it in all three terrains. We're then gonna install the new bypass tubes and I'm gonna do a back-to-back -back comparison and give you guys some real reviews to see, hey, is that upgrade worth the money? You guys know I'm real picky. I have a pretty good feel for what I like and what I think high performance suspension should feel like. So I'm excited about that. Um, also speaking of future upgrades, we will most likely be adding the limit straps. In the dunes, I didn't feel any suspension topping out. Um, it felt good, you know, there's like a nice top out bumper that they have installed there. Um, they do have the extended caps as well in the reservoir, so not sure how much that has to play with it or if that's not even related. But, you know, I didn't notice any top out issues. I did notice a suspension that was well-rounded and works good. Um, it'll be a better test of the small bump compliance now that I'm back in the desert. It's harder for me to feel that in the dunes. Um, but that is something that uh, we will be installing. So you'll see the limit straps probably get added to this just as a precautionary measure. MTS recommends that I think it, it makes sense. A lot of high performance off-road cars, race cars do have limit straps. So their kits are nice and tidy and I think we'll be adding that soon. Um, one more suspension upgrade I want to talk about are the lower ball joints. So I know Polaris initially had some ball joint issues with the first couple of year Pro R, maybe the first year, but then they updated. I just decided to be safe. We reached out to one of our local dealers, Jagged X. These guys have a rich racing history. They sell a lot of ball joints. They work with a lot of Polaris customers. I said, Eric, which ball joints do I need? He said, Nick, get the CMI. So that's what we did. CMIs are a small company. I think the gentleman's name is Chuck Cheek. He's known for making racecraft quality, or he's, a, he's known for making race car quality components. And we just went over to Jagged. Jagged was able to pop our stock ones out and install these. They're much beefier than stock. It's a peace of mind. The last thing I want to have happen is a ball joint come apart because the way the Pro R is designed, it all hell will break loose if that were to happen. So feeling pretty good about the front end and, and you can see some of these clips here. I've been driving the car really hard and didn't have to worry about it or think about it. So stoked on that. I think our front end is going to be pretty much dialed with that. On the rear, um, I'm thinking about adding some beefier toe links. Those have been known to come loose. I might update that there in the future. And then uh, speaking about the front again too, we might update to some beefier tie rods. Um, there is a little bit of steering feedback in the Pro R. I'm gonna see how it feels with the wheel tire package. If I do feel that, we might upgrade to something like the ZRP where it corrects the geometry or it helps the geometry. It may prevent some of that as well as being a beefier component. And then I've got my spares for Bahama. So stay tuned, that might be a future piece of content. I just need to get more miles on this car to see if it's worth the money upgrade. All right, guys, I'm gonna move over to the side of the car to show you the most stylish upgrade, which is the new cage. Um, you'll notice a lot of theme with this. We wanna work with a lot of partners, dealers that sell our products, partners, people we've met that we know, like, and trust. There's a lot of really talented cage builders out there, a lot of cages that we'd like to run, but you know, I've been a big fan of what Lane is doing over at Voodoo. They're also based out of Southern Utah and St. George. 
and he has a couple different style cages for the Pro R. This is his cage. The only thing that's different you might notice is I had him remove the grab bars. Now, I do like the grab bars getting in and out of the car, but I just didn't like the look of them, so I thought this looks even cleaner. One thing you're going to notice is our windshield is missing. Uh, we also used their windshield. So design-wise, I love the style of it. It's about the perfect height. I'm 6'3", and I've got plenty of headroom, even for my helmet with the fresh air intake scoop. One thing he also did, Lane there in Southern Utah, if you follow him and any of his crew on Instagram, the guys really get down rock crawling. And they sell a lot of windshields. They want to optimize the visibility, of course, when which is paramount when you're convincing yourself to climb gnarly rocks. So, he had this lower tube, uh, this tube brought down as much as he could, which was a challenge because for 2025, the boot comes up a little bit higher. So he made all that work. I'm really stoked I ran the windshield when I was doing the rock crawling. I like having a windshield, uh, especially when it's colder, of course, and I will probably be keeping it on most of the time unless I'm leading a ride or the weather um, is, is really, really hot. So I'm going back to the windshield life and I'm stoked to be uh, running Lane's cage. It has a nice profile here in the back. It's got tabs for the rear light that we'll mention here in a second. And um, beyond that, uh, that's pretty much it. We had it powder coated, our Chupacabra teal. I had an idea, if you guys can see, we recently launched our oil slick mirrors. These are race mirrors and oil slick, and I was hoping our local powder coater could match that, but it just wasn't close enough. I, an original theme I had was to just have it all black and all the upgrades would be oil slick, but it just uh, wasn't in the car. So we decided to go ahead and run our first car with a teal cage. I'm pretty stoked on how it turned out. All right, let's talk about our Chupacabra products that are on the car and uh, give you some insight into what you might see in the future. Starting off with, of course, our race mirrors. Of course, these are designed to work underneath any windshield. Um, they have a light tab, the light tab that light is designed for the light that's on this car, which is a Squadron Pro. We use our 16 inch center mirror. I'm not sure if you guys know, but our company started with just one center mirror and we designed the 16 inch to have a lot of adjustability. So you notice mine is over to the side and I've got it angled so I can see almost evenly out of the, out of the left or right corner, almost like it's side view mirror. So one of my favorite products, it doesn't get talked about as much because everyone uh, talks about our side mirrors, but we have that of course paired with our headset hanger and Doors, uh, you can see we're keeping the stock doors. We are gonna be launching some new door bags for these. We're testing some prototypes, so stay tuned for those. But of course, we wanna launch door bags, uh, the same door bags you guys have uh, known to really like, enjoy all the features, especially for the value and price that we offer. So door bags will be available soon. I like the stock doors. I think they look good. We just slapped some Chupacabra stickers on the side, and I'm not gonna be wrapping it anytime soon. So i think it looks clean uh, i really like the 2025 lines i think it's a, a big improvement style wise over the 2024 and previous model razors i mentioned lights um pretty simple lighting package at the moment um jacob who's behind the camera is a man who wears many hats here at chupacabra he wired the car all up and i gave him an even more difficult task to wire up the lights in a way that we could test different lights. So right now, like I said, we're running Squadron Pros on the bumpers, excuse me, on the mirror, and then we're running some LP4s down on the front bumper, which is a Cageworks bumper. Now, we go to a lot of trade shows. You guys ask us a lot of questions. We sell a ton of AutoZines lights, and I wanted to maybe shoot some content talking about trying the different setups. If you're not familiar with the race mirrors, you can mount Squadrons, you can mount XL80s or LP4s. We have mounts for all of them. And I thought, Jacob, wouldn't it be cool if we tried some night rides, maybe with the XL80s up top, the LP4s, then we swapped them. What is the ideal setup? Um, you might notice that there's no light bar and we're going away from light bars. You know, they've become a little bit passe. They kick up a lot of dust unless you're leading. And they also add some glare if you're running a windshield. Uh, we sell a lot of pod lights, so I thought it made sense content-wise, helping answer your guys' questions because a lot of you guys are going down the Baja Designs rabbit hole with me. You all want some amber on your car. You all want some white on your car. What is the ideal setup? You're gonna see some more lights on the front of this car in the future. We'll be testing multiple setups. So the car was wired in that regard. So I ran this in Glamis the last couple weekends. I'll be running it this weekend. I love having at least some amber. I run them during the daytime just so it's easier to be seen whether I'm in the dunes or I'm on a Arizona Peace Trail style ride or Baja, you stand out uh, much earlier. It prevents, you know, potentially prevents an injury, or, you know, an accident and safety is, is what we're always about. So look for that lighting setup to evolve. Speaking of lights, 
Um, one light you can see here that's dangling is the Ball Designs Dome Light. Company Chris Stay Flush has a very nice housing and I'll be mounted up here nice and tidy. We decided to go with one Ball Designs Dome Light. It's so bright, it's gonna work well. I think for me, getting my kiddos situated on a night ride. And moving to the rear of the car, you'll see here in a second, we went with the Baja Designs RTL rear light bar. So adding some amber, of course, for the dust to be seen and some tail lights, and it's got a work light, which uh, is a, linked up to our uh, wiring of our Switch Pro, we'll talk about in a second, as well as another cool little uh, feature I'll mention here in just a second. All right, so let's get into some of the electronics. We have a lot of stuff that was installed and wired up by Jacob, the man behind the camera, and a lot of st cool stuff coming. Uh, let's start off with the hat I'm wearing, PCI. PCI has been a brand sponsor of ours. They have taken care of us on this new build. And of course, we had to use them for radio and their fresh air system. So we have the Elite Plus. Um, I've never used a track system. All of our helmets and all that are set up for the Elite. And I'm, I've always been a fan. Of course, it's Bluetooth, so we can link up, link up to some music. And we went with the bigger Kenwood radio. So that is mounted in, and then you can see the shift knob here on our race air. So radio-wise, all four seats are wired. I've got a couple kids. I want to be able to talk to them whether they're in the front and the back. But with the race air, I thought it was made the most sense to just have a two-person setup for the two front seats. Usually on these bigger rides, it's only going to be one or two people in the car. And then if someone is in the back, generally they're not going to be sucking near as much dust because we'll be blocking it in addition to the windshield. So that's what I chose. That's my preferred setup. And um, so far it's worked quite well. Um, let's talk about how it's mounted. I mentioned the company Chris that owns Stay Flush. She's got a nice housing for the dome light. This is a Stay Flush mount. Now, Stay Flush makes a lot of cool options for almost all side-by-sides and multiple different types of options. So, um, we're actually going to swap this one out. We had to get this ready for this ride, but what you're going to notice is you've got your, with the Pro-R, your um, switch here, which controls your power mode, your radio, your Switch Pros controlling all of our accessories, push to talk, race, air. The one thing that's missing we're going to swap out is a horn for our Street Legal Kit I'll talk about in a second. So I love this layout. Yeah, I think it's gonna be awesome. Um, big fans of the Switch Pros. We've used these on pretty much all of our builds. This is the SP9100, which has eight switches. So uh, we have seven of them being utilized right now. The RTL rear, the pumper, the mirror lights, the bumper lights, the whips. Uh, we have some additional lighting, like I said, will be coming in the future. Um, and we've got our bases covered with that. The only thing that's not covered is a horn. So the new update, you'll see we're going to throw a horn right here for our street legal kit. And now we've got, you know, our knob right here for our air pumper. PTT, you might only see if the passenger has their, their push to talk to talk to other cars. I love having the push to talk on the steering wheel. And there are some brackets and all that, but our gang, our guys have been really good. We had them on our YouTube channel a while ago, AZ Wire Pros. These guys are very high end. They know almost anything about everything, electrical, accessories. They developed a cool jumper that allows you to utilize this Polaris button. The AZ Wire Pro Harness is called a CAN PTT with reverse module. So a couple cool features. Now my push to talk is utilizing the Polaris button on the stock Polaris steering wheel. Of course, the Polaris steering wheel on the Dynamics, you have your button I mentioned, which allows you to firm up the suspension, which is a total game changer in the dunes. Adjust your suspension, adjust your, your radio, and then your PTT zero. So you don't have to fumble with another um, uh, mount. It's on the steering wheel, so you can talk out when you're talking. You don't have to let your hands off the steering wheel to talk. I love that. And um, another cool feature I mentioned of that module, when you go ahead and turn the car on and put it in reverse, our work light from our rear light bar is going to light up. So, cool setup. I think it's just ultra slick and ultra clean when you talk about that from AZ Wire Pros, the Stay Flush, all of this. We've got a lot going on on top of the stock electronics, right, which is your Ride Command. The Ride Command GPS works really well. Um, this is your interface. If you guys aren't familiar with the radio, as well as the heated and cooled seats that come stock, um, we can plug in the route, which I will be doing with oh, a little dongle here. Uh, so you can add some files like I will be for the ride this weekend. So I've got that pulled up. We've got a lot going on. There might be some future GPS stuff. And we'll, we'll talk about that on a later video. Um, but 
as a whole electronic all your most all your bells and whistles that's kind of the meat and potatoes other than this last upgrade we'll talk about which is from wd electronics all right so i need all that stuff to be safe communication wise accessory wise comfort wise on our big ride one thing to be safe uh, that we need for these big arizona rides baja rides it's a real nice to have arizona this car is street legal we got a license plate horn and turn signal kit which is from wd electronics this is their new sequential street legal kit here's some b-roll of the blinkers the fronts look really cool the rears tie right in um, fairly simple install wasn't too complex you can see i've got a little blinker uh, module over here just like a car so i love that i mean we're spoiled here in arizona i can go take my kids to soccer in this thing and on these long rides, we are legally able to go on certain roads as we connect to off-road segments. All of you guys are running around Havis, so you know what I'm talking about, Peace Trail, that type of stuff. So I love that for safety. It's gonna be just like driving my car um, now. And it's the first time I've really had this, and I think it's the safest way to go. In the past, I would use my RTL light bar, I'd double click it, and then my amber would flash, and emulating a turn signal, but this is the cleanest way to go. If you check it out, there are already some call outs on the stock Polaris dash. So when you go ahead and turn the blinker on, you can see what WD it just ties right in to the stock wiring and is super cool. Um, really, really cool setup. So uh, thanks WD. Love working with these guys. Again, check out their products. I'm gonna go ahead and link them below and they have a clean kit. Once a new vehicle launches, they've got a kit ready like in less than a week. It's pretty amazing. So. Let me know what you guys think about the cockpit. All of you guys that maybe built out Pro R's, what do you like? Any other suggestions for me or for the viewers watching this channel um, that we could all benefit from? Because I'm not sure how many people are familiar with the different turn signal options. WD makes a really high quality option. Again, AZ Wire Pro, I think all this stuff stay flush. Stay flush has all different variations, so you can really customize exactly what you want. Um, maybe I mentioned the future GPS. I've done some Baja rides, my dad will join me. Maybe we'll add another GPS module and it'd be nice to have it aim towards me and aim towards him. So stay tuned for some products that will allow us to do that if we decide to go that route. And speaking of PCI, uh, PCI also sells a Starlink Mini. So we decided to order a Starlink Mini. You're gonna see this in a future video. Um, PCI sells a mount with magnets where we can transfer it here from the aluminum roof of a Razor to the aluminum or steel roof of your pickup truck. And it also has a battery kit that'll charge the little Starlink Mini for six and a half hours. We might be wiring it in with AZ Wire Pros, so stay tuned on a future install. Um, I like the idea of having the Starlink because for us as a content creator, it gives us more options and opportunities. I was talking to Fish, Fish Gistics, if you guys are following him on social, if you're a race enthusiast, for sure you've heard of him. He raced Nora, he shot some live content from Nora, um, and I'd love to be having that as a podcast, so comment below if you wanna see Fish on our channel, but I would like to talk to him more and share the knowledge with you guys of what he knows and what some of our options are. So having the Starlink allows us to have some interesting communication stuff you might not have heard of, um, whether it's just live video, of course, a lot of you guys do off-road to get away and you don't necessarily need or want to be connected, but I like the safety element. Like when I'm in Baja, we were able to access, we had an issue last time I was down there, you know, not having a sat phone. So having internet connection, I think is good from a safety perspective and allows us to do some things content wise, uh, as well as even posting something or, or communicating when we're out in the boonies and sharing these experiences with you guys and giving you guys a real insight and getting you stoked on some of these rides and where we go and where we get to, so highlights we get to see and be able to flip a switch and have the start link in the live internet no matter where we're going and i think it's going to be really cool safety for us as a content creator um and you know the starlinks are really allowing more content to come out of remote areas if you guys are enthusiasts of racing just i was following the ball 1000 there's a lot more content coming out because people have internet access so stay tuned for that that's kind of what the next evolution of this car looks like as we kind of make this a media powerhouse by adding uh, some Starlink thanks to PCI. Since we're in the back of the car, we can't forget our whip of choice, which is 5150 whips. You'll notice these bases are white. This is the new chalk line, the 187. I run two four footers. I've been a huge fan of the 5150 whips. We take them, of course, in Utah, which is really harsh on the whips because of the trees and all that, some of the brush, it doesn't move as much. 
Um, I've had tremendous luck with them. They're really bright. Of course, they're fully adjustable. Great company to work with. They pop in and out with the magnetic uh, mechanism. Uh, pretty easy to wire up, and the app works really well to control. All right, final elements on the back of the car. Storage, uh, Mac designs, phenomenal. Probably the highest quality, coolest storage box you can get. This one's custom, powder-coated matte black. And this is the newest design for the Pro R, which will fit our 35-inch spare. Of course, we're running a full 35-inch spare. Only on the desert tire setup, we don't really need to run a spare, of course, in the dunes or when we're rock crawling with the sticky tires. So, it comes with some loops or fully adjustable E-Track. You can add some more items up here if you want. We're going to use a Y strap and go ahead and put it on for, like I said, our desert tire setup. Ton of room for a cooler tools. I'll do a separate video talking about what I put in, spare parts, all this stuff as we really build out everything we need for the big adventure ride. So we are covered. Um, finally moving down to the bottom of the car, here is the license plate mount from WD Electronics. So overall clean setup. Like I said, everything works. You got some all the functionality you need to have us covered no matter which environment we go. So let me know what you guys think, guys. It'll be a work in progress, like I mentioned. We try to think about when we build a car like this content things that we can do and test and tweak and always evolve so share your ideas a lot of you guys have owned pro r's and used them and loved them and bought products and maybe changed them or wish you had done something different let me know what you think about our setup thanks everybody for watching if you guys like the content please like and subscribe and we will be seeing you soon with the next big adventure ride here on chupacabraoffroad.com